Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of Seamstress. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be a kind of random catch up video. I've got a few things to share, including some new makes, an alteration that I thought I'd share with you. I'd really like your help on my next Minerva brand ambassador post and I also have um, a little bit of a knitting update as well. So if you are new here, I'm Sally, this is my channel Secret Life of a Seamstress where I talk all about dressmaking and sewing and making a handmade wardrobe. I mainly talk about sewing and dressmaking but there is sometimes some knitting and crochet and other crafts involved as well. So if you are new and you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to consider doing so and if you are a regular viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again today. So just before I get started I'll quickly share with you what I'm wearing and today I'm wearing my toaster sweater version 2 which I made recently from a beautifully soft tensile French terry fabric from meat milk fabrics. So this morning when I got up it was absolutely freezing and I did wonder whether this sweater was going to be warm enough to wear but I'm pleased to say that it's actually really lovely and cosy. It's quite a thin fabric but the inside is really nice and brushed so it is nice and warm to wear even though it is quite thin. So I'm glad I decided to put this on this morning. So the first thing I wanted to share with you was a finished dress project. I recently shared that I was going to be making a dress for my mum and it was this dress here, it's the So Different Patterns Triple Tuck Smock Dress. So we picked this one up from um, the Knitting and Stitching Show in London back in October. This is a lovely dress pattern, it's by So Different Patterns as I say who are new to me, I've not tried any of their patterns before, um, but my mum really liked this triple tuck smock dress. It's a really simple style dress, it has raglan sleeves to it, short sleeves, but I guess you could lengthen them if you wanted to. There are no fastenings at all to this dress, you just pull it on over your head and then the front has these pretty sort of tuck pleat details as well which bring the dress in nicely and just adds a little bit of interest. And here's the finished dress. I'm so pleased with how this turned out, it was a really quick easy pattern to sew up actually. I think I sewed this up in around two hours once I'd cut it all out and I really enjoyed sewing the pleat details at the front here. I can't remember the last time I sewed pleats but they're actually quite satisfying to do, aren't they? So yeah, you can just see that the raglan seams are here, nice short sleeves, back is really plain, and the neckline is just finished with a facing, so it's a nice sort of pull-on tunic style smock dress. Oh, I forgot to say, there are some inseam pockets as well, so if you are a pocket lover, then this is perfect. You can, of course, leave the pockets out if you prefer, but my mum wanted some pockets, so we put those in. So I made this up from a really pretty blue fabric from Higgs and Higgs. It's a needle cord fabric, so it's nice and brushed and cosy to wear for this time of year. And I think this would look really good actually worn over, say long sleeve tops and polo necks and things like that. So I have already given this dress to my mum and she's tried it on and everything, so I'll put some photos in of her wearing it as well. I did actually have to pop round and steal the dress back so that I could talk about it in today's video. <laughs> but I really like it when I have the actual garment to show you like this. I just think you can see the details a little bit more rather than just a photo. The pattern instructions were really nice and clear and easy to follow and the pattern was easy to cut out as well. I did trace it this time because we were a little bit worried about how the sizing would turn out. Um, actually, it fits her really nicely. We went on the finished garment measurements actually, rather than my mum's actual dress measurements or body measurements, I should say. So I would say if you are planning to make this pattern, definitely take your own body measurements, of course, but check them against the finished garment measurements because the dress does actually come up quite oversized. And I guess that's because you might like to wear it over things. It's that kind of um, smock style of dress. I did have a little bit of a squash and a squeeze to get everything cut out of the fabric that we bought actually. And I'm not sure how that happened because we did use the recommended amount given in the pattern. <laughs> So yeah, I did have to play a little bit of um, pattern Tetris to get everything in and I did go into the selvage edge of the fabric on one of my pieces. But luckily that selvage just kind of got eaten up in the seam allowance so it all worked out okay in the end. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that make and it was a lovely pattern to sew up. 
Next I have another finished sweatshirt pattern to show you and this one I did make for myself. So I think I mentioned recently that I wanted to try lengthening the Jarrah sweatshirt pattern by Megan Nielsen. I wear sort of longer oversized sweatshirts quite a lot around the house or day to day with leggings because they're just so nice and comfortable and easy to throw on. And most of my sort of longer sweatshirts are ready to wear ones because a lot of them have slogans and things on them but I thought I'd have a go at trying to make myself a kind of longer line sweatshirt using the Jarrah pattern. So this is quite a simple make really. Um, all I did was use the Jarrah sweatshirt pattern, the standard sweatshirt pattern with the cuff and handbands and um, wristbands and things like that. And I just used a ready to wear sweatshirt pattern that I already had to get the length and simply lengthen the pattern down to that length. And now I have a nice kind of tunic length sweatshirt that I can wear around the house with leggings and be really cozy. So that was a really simple, quick and easy change to make. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure why I haven't done it before now, because it was really simple. I didn't need to widen out the pattern over my hips or anything like that, because the Jarrah pattern is quite oversized anyway. So it was fine. It just went over my hips as it was. This um, sweatshirt fabric is a Lady McElroy sweatshirt fabric. It's really cozy inside. And this one is a really nice plum color which I seem to be quite attracted to these days. So this one went together really nicely, except that I was really annoyed with myself when I was sewing this up because I got the neckband in perfectly and then realized I'd sewn it on back to front with the center seam at the front. <laughs> so I had to unpick everything and sew it all back in, which was very annoying because I do think this neckband is a little bit stretched out now actually. Not that you'd notice too much because I think my hair covers a lot of it to be honest. Um, but yeah, if you're being really picky, this is not the best, most flattest neckband I've ever sewn. Um, so that was annoying, but apart from that, everything went together okay. And I think what I'm going to do with this actually, because it is quite plain, I'm going to look out for like an iron-on motif or transfer or something that I can put on the front of this, just to kind of liven it up a little bit. Um, and adds a little bit of interest, but yeah, that's my length in Jarrah. Before I move on from sewing onto knitting, I'm just going to quickly share with you some thoughts on my Tildy shirt dress by Atelier Dupe. So I made this recently in one of my sewing days in my life videos, and I really love this pattern. It was such a nice sew, and um, yeah, I really love how it turned out and everything. So I wore this out for dinner recently, last week and realized that when I was wearing it, the shoulder seams really want to fall back on me. So where the shoulder seams should be kind of in the middle of your shoulder, they're about here. So about an inch, maybe an inch is a bit of an exaggeration, but they're too far back basically. So the dress wants to fall back all the time, um, which was quite annoying after I'd worn it for quite a while and a big shame because I didn't realize that at all when I tried the dress on. And I think it's just something that you learn as you wear a garment isn't it you don't necessarily know these things until you wear your garment out and about and then you can see how it hangs on you and how it fits and things so i think next time i make this dress and i really do want to make it again i will do a forward shoulder adjustment and i've never made an adjustment like that before in my life <laughs> so it will be an interesting one I've had a little bit of a look around on YouTube for tutorials and things like that um, and yeah I think I kind of know what I need to do next time but yeah it's such a shame because I do really love this dress and I still think I will wear it because I think it's one of those things that's not necessarily noticeable to anyone else but you know when things aren't quite right and when they don't feel right don't you so yeah I'll definitely keep wearing this dress but yeah next time I'm gonna make that forward shoulder adjustment it's still a little bit static to wear actually. I haven't yet looked for any anti-static spray. I know people did recommend that to me. I need to have a little look on Amazon and see what I can find. I wanted to try just wearing it with a slip first and see how that works. And it did help a bit, but the slip that I own is only kind of a three quarter one. So it comes down to my knees. And obviously this is a full length dress. So it did sort of brush against me a bit and end up a bit static towards the end of the night. But yeah, that's definitely a change I need to make next time. So I thought I would share that. I've just realized I do have another sewing thing to share actually before I move on to knitting. And that's my Minerva Maker project. So I have a project which I'm slightly behind on actually to work on for Minerva. And it's to make something with this lovely fabric. And I think I've already shared it actually. It's a really nice cozy double knit fabric. 
and it's in this lovely pale pink colour. It's all rolled up neatly like this at the moment so I won't take it out but I have two metres of this so quite a lot of it and it's really really cosy. I really need to get this made up into something. So I was originally going to make this pattern up which was on my list to make for autumn. It's the Stylark Anderson knit dress and it's a nice oversized kind of sweatshirt style dress I guess with some panels at the side, some pockets and things in it. I really wanted to have a go at this as a new sweater dress pattern for autumn and that's what I was going to make with the pink fabric. But for some reason something about that fabric and pattern pairing isn't sitting properly with me and I think that's why I haven't made up my Minerva project yet because I'm just not sure that this pink fabric is going to work for the Anderson dress. So what I'm wondering instead is whether I should try out the South Bank sweater dress by Nina Lee, which is a pattern that keeps coming back to me because so many of you keep recommending it to me in the comments and saying how much you love it. So I keep wondering whether or not I should try the South Bank dress. So let me know, do you think it will work well in this pink fabric or will that be too pink? <laughs> So I think what was putting me off of the South Bank dress a little bit was the high neck. You probably all know already how I feel about high necks, but I think if they stand away from your neck, then I'm fine with it. It's just that I don't really like, say, turtlenecks or polar necks or anything that's too tight around your neck. And I think the South Bank dress neckline does actually stand away from your neck. So I think I'll probably be all right with the pattern. Um, so let me know in the comments, should I make the Anderson dress pattern by Stylark with this fabric or should I have a go at the Nina Lee South Bank dress? I do really need to get this made up for Minerva because I am a little bit behind and apart from that I just want to get something made up with this fabric so that I can have it and wear it because it feels really cosy. So let me know what I should do about that, I need some help and I need to stop procrastinating and get on with this. Okay, so I am going to move on to knitting now. <laughs> so I have started a new knitting project this week, or maybe it was last week actually, I can't quite remember now. And the reason I did that was because I am procrastinating about sewing up my Zerulum sweater by We Are Knitters, which I have finished now, but if you remember, it has all the stripes and all of the threads to weave in. <laughs> and for some reason at the moment, I just can't face doing that, even though I really want that jumper sewn up and done. So instead of getting on with that, I decided that I would start my next knitting project, which is a hat for my daughter. So I shared this hat book recently that I picked up from John Lewis. It's a Moda Rowan um, hat knitting book, which I picked up for about two pounds. And it has all of these lovely beanie hats that you can knit with it. So I really wanted to make a hat for my daughter. She went for this style here, which is really kind of um, a, just a classic sort of normal hat. She said she wanted just a normal hat <laughs> and it's all just knit in one by one rib. So it's really nice and easy to do. So I decided to get on with that rather than sewing up my jumper. So this hat should actually be knit in Rowan Kid Classic yarn, which I've never knit with, but it looks super soft and cozy. But I actually got my daughter to choose her own yarn and she went for this nice purple colour. So she chose this yarn from Hobbycraft. It's a nice purple colour. She wanted a purple hat. So I am kind of winging this a little bit because this is just a normal sort of ball of double knitting yarn um, as opposed to the Kid Classic that I should be using for the hat. So I'm hoping it will turn out okay. Um, but because I'm knitting it on the wire like this, I can kind of pull it around her head and just make sure that it fits okay and everything. It is an adult size hat, so I think I'm probably going to have to um, shorten it a little bit just so that it's not absolutely massive for her. So I'm kind of trying it on her head as much as I can as I go so I can kind of get the length right. And I think I'm about at the stage now where I need to start decreasing for the crown. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> it's a bit of a trial and error project, but I think with a hat, you know, hopefully it will be okay. It's a nice colour, isn't it? Nice purple colour. And then she also chose this really fluffy pom-pom, which I got from the Knitting and Stitching show as well. I got a white one and a brown one. I let her choose what colour she wanted and she wanted the white one. So when it's all done, I'm going to put this white pom-pom on top and hopefully that will work really nicely. But I do need to get that finished actually because at the moment she hasn't got a hat at all and she does need one now and again. So yeah, that's my procrastination project. I just thought I would quickly let you know where I am with my Zerulum sweater. So I've seamed up one of the shoulders and I've knitted up the high neck, which I hope won't be too tight. I don't think it will be. 
Um, so all I actually need to do now is sew this all together. But as I say, I'm really procrastinating about it because I just feel like I can't face sewing in all of these ends. But thank you for all of your suggestions about sewing up with the ends. And I think I'm definitely going to do that because hopefully that will help <laughs> with getting rid of some of the extra um, yarn threads. But yeah, I do need to just get this done because I want to be able to wear it because it's all done. All I need to do is sew it up. So it's silly to just keep putting it off, isn't it? I need to just get on with it. <laughs> Another random thing that I thought I would share with you in this video is that um, at the weekend, me and my mum and my sister and my niece and my daughter <laughs> all went off for a little trip to London. We went to the V&A Museum to have a little look at the Beatrix Potter exhibition, which was there. And it was really nice, quite short. Um, but as well as seeing that, we had a little look around at some of the shops in London as well. And we ended up going to Liberties in Regent Street. Liberties is one of my absolute favourite shops. They have an amazing haberdashery department there, which I really wanted to look at. Fortunately, as London often is, especially at Christmas time, it was absolutely packed. <laughs> so, so busy. It just wasn't pleasant to look around at all, really, which was such a shame. But nonetheless, we did manage to look around a little bit. We went to the Christmas department, we went to the toy department, of course, and I did manage to have a quick scoot around the haberdashery department, which was lovely and a little bit quieter actually than the other areas of the shop. And I just thought that I would quickly share with you what I bought. So as I say, I had a quick look around and I ended up buying these two half meters, I think they are, Liberty Print cotton fabric. And I went for this one here, which I think is kind of your traditional Liberty print, it's a nice red colour. And then I bought this one as well, which is a nice sort of ditzy floral heart print. And the reason I went for those colours is because I actually want to make up another cloth doll by Studio 7 Patterns. The lady that designs these lovely patterns has recently released a reindeer pattern and I think it's so cute. And I'd really like to sew that up for Christmas time and make the reindeer or reindeers, a couple of outfits using these fabrics. And I think they'll be really nice and really Christmassy. I also picked up these two iron-on patches as well because I think they're really nice. So I went for this cute little llama one here and then this panda one because my daughter loves pandas and I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with these yet, but I just thought I'd pick them up since I'd seen them there. We also bought this little um, telephone decoration for our Christmas tree as well, which we thought was cute. My daughter at the moment is kind of obsessed with this kind of phone because <laughs> she um, obviously is from a generation where this kind of phone doesn't exist anymore. And we came across one somewhere recently, I can't remember where. And I was just telling her about how telephones used to be and yeah, it was quite funny. So we thought we would pick that one up as well. So that's what I bought at Liberties and hopefully I will be able to get on with that reindeer soon as well. And then lastly, I just wanted to share with you a bit of random sewing thinking that came to me out of nowhere. <laughs> when I was watching I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here last night, in fact, <laughs> does anyone else find that when their mind is on something else, sometimes it will just flip back to sewing and out of nowhere, you're sort of planning a dress while you're watching something on TV. <laughs> it's very weird, isn't it? But sometimes that's when you get your best ideas, actually, I think, when your mind is doing something else, it tends to sort of give you good ideas. So that's what I find anyway. So I talked recently about this pattern. It's the Closet Core NYX dress. And I said that I wanted to make this as my Christmas dress using this fabric from Atelier Dupe. And last night it came to me that actually, instead of making the full length version of this dress in this fabric, I think this dress would actually look really nice as a shorter dress made from this beautiful Atelier Brunette Dobby fabric. It's a viscose Dobby. It's actually the Dobby viscose that I made my two Ogden camis from recently. And I love this fabric. I just know how nice it is to wear. Um, and there's a really nice red, sort of burgundy red color available in this fabric. And it came to me last night that it would make a really nice short version of this NYX dress. And then I couldn't get that out of my head and decided that I really wanted to make a shorter version of this in that fabric for a Christmas dress. So I think I might actually swap my Christmas plans and have this fabric made up as an Atelier Dupe Tildy dress again, when I hopefully make my shoulder adjustment and get it right. And actually make a shorter version of this in that Atelier Brunette Dobby fabric for Christmas as well and see how that goes. And I just thought it would be a really nice fabric and pattern pairing. I'm making all these plans, but actually 
I don't know when I'm going to get time to sew them. <laughs> At the moment, I just feel like I'm really struggling for sewing time and getting all of the things done that I want to get done in my head. Okay, so I think that's everything I have to catch you up with today. It was a bit random. I'm sorry about that. I just felt like I had quite a few things to sort of catch up on really. So yeah, a bit of a random one, but I quite like filming this kind of video because I feel as though I can just chat. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what your plans are for this week. Let me know if you're making anything. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I will be back on Sunday with another video and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Take care everyone. Bye.